Welcome back to another pen talk. Some viewers have asked to look a little bit at my vintage, so I thought I would look at a particular model, the Eversharp Skyline model, which was made from 1941 through 1948. As we look here a little bit closer, we can see there's three pencils which are mint, so I'm not going to do anything with them. Then we come across a pen which kind of looks like a vintage skyline, but it's not. It's a modern one. Then we have your red one, which is very nice. The other thing you notice is there's no double checks at the top of the clip, which is common. Then we have some gold top ones. Everything's gold filled to metal, so it, it cleans up very nicely. And then we have some other ones here. So we're going to go into a little bit of a depth on all of these. And the one at the end is the Fifth Avenue, which is the model they came out with after the Skyline, and we'll talk a little bit about that too. Here's a look at an unrestored Wall Eversharp Skyline. This is the basic model. It's heavily oxidized, but it's gold filled trim, so that'll clean up very nicely. I think this is a black, but there's also a little bit of another color there, so maybe when we shine it up, we'll get a chance to see what that other color is. Here's uh, the pen that we looked at that was as found and this is how it cleaned up. It cleaned up very very well. These pens polish up well. I went through one polishing pad uh, to clean off the, the corrosion that was on the outside. And as I mentioned I think all the metal here is gold filled and that's why it cleans up well. It's not plated and it's certainly not solid gold because that would make it unaffordable. But this pen has been restored. It's a nice classic black. I'd say this is regular size. They made a smaller version, an oversized. I don't have any examples of the oversized. The uh, section that you hold is very nice. You can literally hold it anywhere. The threads are just a little bit rough, but they don't bother me at all. And one of the things that we should look at is the designation of the gold filled. So they have it at the bottom of this band here. So what it shows is, here the gold filled shows it's 1 tenth, 14 karat gold filled. So that's actually 14 karat gold that's laid over either a brass or a bronze or, or depending upon what metal they're going to put underneath of it. So uh, it's not a plating, so it wears and survives time very well. Some people talked about a 50 year life, but that's kind of subjective and relative. So that's uh, nice how they clean up. I thought I'd use these two for a deep dive into some of the variations that they made. They made probably hundreds of variations of this pen. These both have a striated cap on the top, which is very nice. Very interesting, similar to what you might see in uh, a modern uh, Pelican. The bodies are two different colors. One is a green and one is a brown. They both have the same lever fill, which is one of the consistent things amongst them. And you notice the difference in size is primarily due to the length of the barrel. These uh, shined up very nicely. And you also notice that the uh, plastic used in the dome cap or the derby is also the same color as the body of the pen. I just find this to be a, a very uh, good combination. These have just been polished and waxed. Slight variations in the color. You know, again, a uh, very nice, nice, nicely done. And this design is, is iconic, ever sharp when it originally was Wall Pen when they bought the Boston Pen Company and then it became Wall Eversharp and then in the 1940s they reincorporated with the uh, subdivision Eversharp to just be Eversharp. As you can see there's just Eversharp on the clip. You know and this shows another some of the variations. This is a, a completely gold filled top which is something that they did. A wider band here at the bottom. All the pencils have a rappel mechanism which was unique for ever sharp and all of these work very well and you hold it down you can push the lead back in it's a nice thick lead and all the mechanisms survive the the uh, test of time I'd say this is probably the most interesting pattern 
but one of the things that is apparent is there's no double check. So this was the low end of the skyline. Again, the dome derby top here is in a red color also, but this is just a, a very unique, interesting pattern. Same lever fill as we've seen on the other ones. No band here, uh, another cost savings measure. So this was probably, you know, their least expensive line. All of them unscrew cap, all of them post nicely. You know, even the smaller one fits well in the hand. Most of these are all uh, written with and uh, posted. Here's uh, two of the gold filled varieties. This was probably the most common, uh, at least from my view of what I have and what I've seen, the most common one of the styles. Again, different colors, uh, same lever clip and different shades of the resin. This one's a little chewed up at the end, which is, um, you know, kind of typical of what you might find in this type of uh, pen and this type of age. I want to take a close up look at some of the engraving that's been done in these pens. Across that, that band there is um, some of the statements, you know, it's a gold filled metal, which is a very thick uh, actual gold that's rolled onto probably brass or uh, copper or bronze at the bottom. So that makes uh, these kind of unique in what they did there. I mean, that's where the branding is besides the uh, skyline on the, or sorry, the Eversharp on the, on the uh, clip. Now, this is a modern one. Uh, this is not the latest version of them. These I bought in uh, the 90s from Gaston in uh, Arkansas. And I think uh, the Eversharp, when they remade them, I think they got a hold of the old original tools because this is just so much almost identical to the vintage, which I think is an homage to the vintage. Uh, it's not a lever fill. It has a captured converter. Kind of like what the standoffers are doing with Deltas and a couple other companies. And there's that metal threads. What's nice is when you screw it together, it's pretty invisible, which is, it's, it's a very good design from that viewpoint. Here's one of the mint pencils. You know, this is the as found condition and I won't do anything to, to clean this up. I'm going to leave them uh, in the mint as found condition. Uh, if I ever do decide to uh, get rid of some of my collection, you know, some people just like finding things in that mint condition. And here's, you know, a similar type of pencil cleaned up. What's interesting about this is it seems to have like a steel or certainly uh, not a gold plated band there in the middle, which is uh, not typical of, of all the pencils, but certainly this one, as I mentioned uh, before. Now this one doesn't have any lead in it, but all the pencils work. And this one is uh, a gold uh, derby top on it. This pen has had extensive work done to it. This whole section up here is glued back together. Not something that I would do, but that's what uh, some of the previous owners did. It's also not as aligned. I think it's been a little bit warped by heat. But it has a nice big gold band here at the bottom, and it, it shows you another example of what they did with uh, the gold derby. So this is what a Skyline looks disassembled. This is the breather tube that goes into the middle of the feed. It's easy to disassemble these. Um, easy to replace the bladder. I haven't had to replace any uh, of the bars inside. This cap is, to me, amazing uh, engineering design. Very unique. Nobody else ever used one like this before or after. It's a little spring here, so this just screws back into the cap. A lot of threads there, so it's nice and secure. And it also forms the inner cap for the uh, nib. That just tightens up. I try to just grab the derby or top to give it a nice turn so it's nice and tight. I'll go into detail on the nib and feed, and that breather tube, as you can see, keeps falling out. It's a little tapered at one end. Uh, this is the only one that I have in working order. I may have some spare ones someplace, but... So this just fits, if there was a sack there, this would just go inside the sack. 
put it into place, it snaps into place, and we screw it back together. So um, that's how easy they come apart. Um, amazing engineering, beautiful design, form and function, all in one place. The nibbin feed is just a pressure fit into this section, which makes them fairly easy to pull apart. Here's what uh, those carvings in the feed look like. Again, very, very unique to this model of pen. You'll notice there's a breather hole here, which corresponds to the hole where the feed, the um, insert would go into, that would go up into the bladder. So this is, uh, you know, I have to admit that I've not found one of these that I, in my collection that I've really in, enjoyed writing with, but uh, that's uh, is kind of my personal taste. These nibs are fairly stiff. As I mentioned, it's just uh, an easy thing to reinsert. So I just find a nice place where it fits in and will, it's basically where it goes. Looks pretty well lined up. Hard to work over the camera, but that's uh, another unique characteristic of these pens. I didn't find any uh, Skyline ads in my collection of ads. I found this in my Skyline book. So, interesting way they're positioning the pen. Obviously, the gold filled models are quite expensive, but even the uh, regular set is a good price. So in looking at the uh, Eversharps, I, I showed you this uh, Fifth Avenue model, which is the model that Eversharp came out with after the Skyline. It was not popular, and, and I can, uh, from my viewpoint, I can tell why. This is not an attractive pen. Interesting design elements, but, you know, it doesn't really flow together. Certainly after the streamlined, iconic design of the Skyline, this certainly doesn't follow up with any of those traditions. It's a slip-off cap. It's a hooded nib, so a lot of, at this time, the Parker 51 was starting to gain a lot of popularity, so hooded, everybody had to have a hooded nib. It's a lever fill. Uh, it's comfortable to hold, it posts well, but, you know, it's just not, I think these up and, and written with them, and they just don't do much for me. Yeah, I'm glad to have it in my collection as part of a historical point in time. So that same year, uh, Waterman also came out with something to compete in that same uh, market. Similarities is uh, a metal cap. You know, uh, similar to some of the other Waterman. Uh, nice box lever. Nice red color. Slip-off cap just like the other one and a little bit of a hooded nib there. So they were all trying to match that kind of design. Uh, this one I don't think lasted very long. Again, these are all from the mid to late 40s. Here's an ad I found in my collection which shows this Waterman pen. They call it a Taperite. Claim the nation over. And this is from 1945. And it's America's newest pen. This is the box that the uh, newer pen came in. Not certain what the WF4SF stands for. Soft fine might be uh, a designation, but it's certainly not a soft nib. And as I mentioned to you before, I bought it from Jim Gaston, who uh, passed away a few years ago. And um, <clears throat> Pen Habit is reviewing one of the pens that Bexley made for him. This comes in a nice velvety box you know feels nice to the touch as you open it up it's a classic clamshell it's a little bit tight but when you open it up you'll see the nice wall sorry the ever sharp skyline emblem there it's made in france and of course the pen sits here comes with a warranty and other information which is underneath of the cover Guaranteed for life like the original one. It's a little Eversharp Skyline story. 
And because uh, I got it from Jim, he included uh, his card in there also. For those of you that uh, follow the Skyline version, you may recognize this. Yes, they made a yellow version of it. Sadly, this is the remake, not the original one. Um, I like the presentation. Again, we have the cards in here. Uh, none of that nice stuff. It just has a foam insert here in the top of the cap. And the pen sits here. There was a, a yellow cab that sat here, but they sadly are no longer produced and, 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 and available. But it's, it's an interesting pen. It's on the small side, but it has the same features. You know, it has your capture converter. So this is another one that I bought because I've always wanted the original one, was never able to acquire it. Nice that it has a yellow section. Um, again, the same type of nib that's in the other ones. This one was never inked. So I thought it was a little teaser for those that are familiar with this brand of pen. We need to do a writing sample. This is just that black one that I restored. Um, it's a smooth writer. I did do a little tuning on the nib, but not much. It's also a very stiff nib, which sadly, all of my Skylines have a stiff nib in them. Uh, I mean, they're nice, consistent writers. You know, uh, I did that Schaefer Jade. I mean, at this period of time, stiff nibs were more popular than flexi nibs. You may hear a little bit of that on paper, but this is uh, Fabriano paper, which has some coarseness to it. So, uh, sadly, none of the Skylines have made it into my Daily Writer collection. I may try again, but in the past I have not been happy with them over time. Which is sad, because I really uh, love the way they look. I love the design, uh, you know, the Art Deco look. So let's put the vintage one aside, and let's take a look at the newer one. We should compare nibs, because I think you'll find that to be a very different and interesting look. It's easy to see which one is the vintage, which is on the left, and the one on the right is the modern version, or the one of the modern versions that they put out. Uh, classic plastic feet on the other side, certainly not as unique, but that has certainly a width to the nib. Reminds me of platinum nibs. I don't know who made those nibs, but I don't think they're German make, so they could have been made. The pen was uh, made and assembled in France. So let's put uh, this to paper. And this nib is very, very similar. It's stiff. It writes well, but it requires some pressure to get ink out of it. Uh, not quite, quite a little bit more pressure than the original Skyline did. And as you can see, it, it runs dry. I mean, this is not a, a wet writer by any stretch of the imagination. That's extremely dry. Again, I invested in these pens because I wanted to take a look at a modern version of the Skyline, but uh, none of these made my uh, daily writer routine. So this is a uh, Sailor uh, Copper Pheasant ink. It's hard to recognize the color from, uh, from this uh, thin line that doesn't have much ink in it. But you can see it, it's almost wider on the horizontal than on the vertical. And I've also done shimming and done everything I can do to try to open up the feed and get more flow, but I can't get it to work the way that I would like it to work. So it's a nice, interesting pen to have in my collection, but not one that will be an everyday writer. Well, thank you for sticking with me for this long video. Hopefully you found it informative, educational. Uh, here we are looking at my collection of Skylines. Um, I have to do a little bit of editorial comment. As much as I love these pens, I'm unfortunately not, not found a nib that I like in the group. Part of it has to do with my personal tastes in a nib, I know there are Skylines with flexible nibs. I actually have a modern pen with a flexible uh, nib in it that was from old stock from uh, Eversharp. 
Uh, so even though I've tried to make these pens daily writers, they have never made degrade, even though I love the way they look. I'm just amazed at the design, the engineering. Uh, engineering always appeals to me. So uh, hopefully this helps you make a decision on what you might be interested in as far as pen goes. And, you know, to me, this is just nice to take a look back through history to, you know, an eight-year period on Eversharp. Uh, this was their latest um, success and their only, you know, after this, the pens that they made never really caught on. They tried to do ballpoints and that, that was a, a business uh, failure. Uh, so therefore, you know, this is their last hurrah, so to speak. So, uh, and I think they did an excellent job with it. Um, they had to compete against some heavy hitters in the Schaefer's and the Parker's and the Waterman's. And when I look back through all my ads, like I said, I couldn't find a Skyline ad. I found a few Ever Sharp and a few wall ads. In fact, more wall ads than anything else. So that kind of indicates that towards the end of their... Um, manufacturing and they kind of ran low on funds and that limited their advertising budget so again thank you for watching um, may you have many great pen experiences may you experience the variety and amazing amount of writing instruments that have been produced that um, I enjoy writing with bye